Howdy folks, howdy, Sean Brock here with you with a uh, free guitar lesson. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. I'd certainly appreciate it. Don't forget we're giving away a bunch of stuff. And real quickly, I'll mention this one is sponsored by Edmonds Guitars, Jimmy Edmonds, Galax, Virginia. The finest sounding and handmade perfection that you can get for, oh, a third to half of the price of most folks. So uh, I'll put Jimmy's link in the description box. Contact him if you're interested in having a guitar built. Of course, this is one of two Edmonds, which I'm proud to own. And I've never owned a better uh, D18 than this. And we had a request from a uh, friend and subscriber in Germany to do this one. This is called Clay and Audie by Blue Highway. Now the guitarist is Tim Stafford. And this is a wonderful, wonderful song. I will put a link to the song in case you don't know it. Uh, also in the description box. This uh, this is one that's hard for me to listen to without tearing up. I remember uh, this came out, oh, I don't know, 95, I'm going to say. I'm, gonna, I'm taking a guess at it. But this is a, a wonderful song, wonderful story. Of course, Tim wrote it. Uh, his wonderful band, Blue Highway, Tim wrote this, and it's based on a true story of a family, uh, two sons who went to uh, Cleveland, Ohio, to get a job uh, during the Great Depression, and one of them uh, came down ill and passed away. Uh, they were trying to save their farm for their parents, and one passed away, and rather than to uh, leave him to be buried in Cleveland, they they sold the farm and, and brought him home. And it's a wonderful song and, and one that resonates with me as an Appalachian person who had folks uh, who, who had to move north at various times. Anyhow, I'm going to show you as best as I can the way Tim played it. And let me also preface this by saying I know that you can study with Tim. If you look up Tim Stafford, uh, he is just a just a killer guitar player and singer and songwriter and an all-around great human being and uh, has a very good sense of melody and space so I'm going to show you this the way he does it and of course when he's doing it he's got uh, four other people backing him up uh, I do this frequently in the demo videos but we will uh, also show a few other approaches that's a little different than the record and you can kind of do your own thing. But uh, starting off, uh, I'm going to say this is in the major key of E. And the chords are E, a, E major, A major, B major, and you have a C sharp minor. Uh, but we are playing capoed at the fourth fret out of a C position. So our chords, we will, our shapes we will have will be a C and A minor a G and an F. So let's get into it. So we start off, you might notice instead of just making a standard C chord, I'm moving my ring finger up to the well the uh, third fret of the E string. We'll call it the third fret because we're capoed at the fourth here. So we're going to consider the capo to be the nut. And I'm making that four finger C chord. So Tim starts directly on the downbeat. So let me explain this to you. We're making this chord and we're going to hammer on with our middle finger from open on the D string to the second. And we're a lot of upstroke here. We're just playing a rolling motion. So, and then we're doing B string. And I'm doing that with an up, up on the G, and then down on the D. It's uh, all just straight back down. So, up, 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 uh, down, down, up. And then we're 
transitioning, we're going to let go of these right here. And we're going to do... And what I'm doing there is second to third. Both downstrokes uh, with the right hand, but second to third on our D string. And that's a hammer on. Then we're transitioning to our four chord. So open. And I've got my third finger. We're going to make this F chord just like we blocked the C chord. We're going to do this on the F chord. We're going to move our third finger down to the third fret uh, on the A string and our pinky right below it, just like we did on the C. And of course, our index is still in the same place it would have been for the C. And there's a lot of options here. Uh, but you will, if you listen to the record, you'll hear a lot of the middle finger lifted or hammering on. So we got we've got that and in this instance uh, the the middle finger is lifted and even our index is not barring the bottom two strings it's it's kind of like we're making a C so the same motions we're just moving them down a set of strings open and then down, down. So up on our B string. Just those three strings. We're going up. So I am skipping the G string when I'm coming back down. So B string, G string, open, D string, close, skipping the G and going back to that B. So now we're going to transition into the two minor or an A minor shape. Very simple. So I'm going two to three and then open on with the G and D. So two to three. And then I'm hammering both of these fingers on in the A minor. And it's again it's the same thing right there. Uh, just run down the center with the B, G, and D strings. And that takes us to our G chord. So. And then we've got the G and D open. And then here's, here's something interesting how Tim harmonizes this. Very a uh, lot of dissonance there, and uh, so that's it's really simple. So in the G shape, open D G, open D G again, and we got our second finger, second fret on the A string and then we're going to let off of that when we go back to this F shape. So I'm going to play it all the way up to here.
grab that to buy us, to fill some space we can grab that just barely pluck that treble E on an upstroke it really fills the, fills the chord out and then we're that's basically one half of the uh, phrase and we're going to kick back in so what we're doing is a two to three on our A so two three open G and D uh, three on the A and that same hammer on like we did before And here we're going to do, uh, by this, uh, if you listen to the song, you'll hear the band playing diamonds. They just play the first uh, long strum of every chord there on the intro, or for the first half of the intro. But now we're into full rhythm with the band, and we can play a combination of rhythm and our cross-picking like we had did. Uh, and that's that's musical taste and it's a matter I can show you the notes but I can't show you how to feel a song okay so you you figure that kind of stuff out of what you want to express but uh, here the second half <laughs> and that's the same thing we did uh, two to three our G and D open and then here we're back in the G shape again and this time so we got got those little strums in there accompanying ourselves so and that is just uh, open G and D strum down strum up and and that's just basically three to two a pull off uh, I'm doing that with my with my second finger to first finger and then the root of the G chord one more time there one strum we're gonna go to the A minor It's the same stuff that we learned in that A minor shape from the C. So um, two to three, open third and fourth, and then the hammer on. And I put my, you know, my index finger is kind of my guide. I've got it. See, while those are sustaining, I got that index finger down there at the, at the first fret on the B string. Preparing to hammer those two fingers onto the second fret. Back to the G shape. So this time, instead of uh, last time we did the, as you remember, so this time though, we're not going to have that open A for the dissonance. We're going to close it and go back to our original F shape with that C on the top that we're making with our third finger. So... So we're going 
Just second finger, or excuse me, second fret with our index finger. And then third fret with our third finger when we're hitting that F. So that, that kind of keeps uh, the melody from coming too dissonant and it, it adds just an interesting, uh, just because there is some repetitiveness, uh, it's slightly changing and it's these slight changes that really make music great or make it uh, just kind of blah. It, it depends on how you're using these slight changes. So one more time from the A minor and I'm going to play this slow. got a transition lick there coming from the four chord our F shape uh, to the back to our C shape so what are we doing there we're doing a hammer a, a pull off from two to open with our second finger Fourth string, open, third, and our first fret on our second, and that's bringing us back to our C shape, and we're doing that. You can do the 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 uh, expanded chord with the G on the top if you want, or you can just settle into a regular C chord, and you got a slot hammer on there. again on that D string so one more time okay so sometimes you might notice in the videos instead of just starting out you'll hear me intro it. And that is something, if I was doing this piece solo, me and guitar, and when I'm demoing guitars, obviously I am, but if I were going to sing it solo, uh, I might would intro it. And basically the first downbeat of the song is still the... But... Uh, I'm picking up, you know, just getting some kickoff notes, and that's just second to third, and basically I'm walking a scale, hammering on there, just the same thing, second to third, open A, second to third. Now the difference is, I'm hammering on on the E string here, our top string, and the uh, all the A string action, I'm not hammering on, I'm playing it open, I'm playing it on the second fret, and sometimes I'm playing it at the third, and sometimes I'm hammering on. Now here's the difference in how those would sound. I, I probably like the sound of the hammer on better. So it's all the same there. Now one thing I do occasionally a little different in the G on the second time around. That's what we had on the first time. So, and when I do the second time around, I'm 
hammering all the way open second third all all with one pick stroke and I'm doing open D string open G string up stroke on my uh, second string at the first fret and then a strum of the five and we had before uh, sometimes you'll see me play uh, which is something I actually picked up from Rob Ox. Uh, he does something kind of similar on the record. Rob Ox is a dobro player, one of the greatest, of, if not the greatest of all time. He's he's my favorite, but <laughs> so I always try to pick up stuff off of him. Uh, where originally we had. I'm doing and so that's open say uh, third and fourth third finger third fret second string and then that's a down stroke I hit an upstroke on the first fret with the first finger and I bring that third finger up here for the bo the bass note on the G string I'm grabbing that D that open D string just to just again to fill out the tune up so and pretty much everything else is the same um, don't be afraid to lift a finger on these chords uh, you know I'm thinking like the A minor Just like we did in the uh, with the F and the C, you can do that in the A minor. Let that G string sustain. Also in the F, we got something real nice there with adding that open bottom string on. We also get something nice if we add the third fret of the bottom string uh, and then of course we can close the F all the way we can add that pinky on and that's Part of what makes Tim's playing so great is he takes the space and he doesn't always just have to go blah, 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 and fill up the space uh, or play a bunch of eighth notes or 16th notes or 32nd notes. Um, sometimes he lets the space be a little more empty than others. And that's, that's the maturity in a musician. And that's something that, again, you've got to feel. Nobody can teach you. Anyhow, please subscribe and check out Jimmy Edmonds' guitars and for sure check out this song by Tim Stafford and Blue Highway, Clay and Audie. If there's something you guys need a little bit of help with, let me know. We're going to try to do a couple of lessons while things are, are slow. And, of course, I'm available for private lessons as well. I appreciate you guys watching. <laughs>